Okay, hi everyone, I'm Ghost from Sala, and the World Cup may have kicked off, but there is still time to do a World Cup guide to Japan, and that's what I'll be doing today. Slightly different format for this episode, as you may see, last time I was going through the players more and looking them outside of FIFA. This time, I'm going to do a sort of FIFA gameplay and um, go through them in FIFA, go through all the Japanese players in FIFA. That is because I do a World Cup series, not World Cup, I do it uh, on my channel all this through this year. I've been doing a FIFA series with Jap so solely using Japanese players and so I thought doing uh, this guide on FIFA would be a better alternative to doing the layout as I did last time. Plus, um, it's almost uh, uh, an episode of that series too because two great cards uh, on FIFA came out um, and I thought I wanted to use them. So why not combine the two series? And uh, yeah. So if you're new, of course, I have two other World Cup guides. One to Poland and one to Colombia. So if you um, <coughs> are a fan of the Japanese football team and want to see that, what their opposition is, then uh, you can head over and check out those two videos too. They're a bit old, but uh, uh, oh well. <laughs> um, I, I would say they're still good. And yeah, this team is mostly the team that I'll be playing in the World Cup actually, with some exceptions, but I'll explain that in a bit. So let's go through the team and explain what their role is in the Japanese squad and what they'll do. So first up, we have the goalkeeper, and I believe he will be the goalkeeper um, in the Japanese team, Eiji Kawashima. Uh, he's um, he can be he got relegated with Mets this year and they conceded a lot of goals uh, but he was their main goalkeeper and I would say it's probably a good idea to pick him he can he he's for the thing with Karis, Kawashima is that he varies quite a lot he can either have brilliant games or he can just play absolutely terribly and Japan will be hoping that he plays brilliant games um, but he has proven on the international stage, of course, he was there in 2010, so I think he is the right choice as goalkeeper. Higashiguchi, the other goalkeeper for Japan, is just not quite good enough for me in goal, uh, so yeah, he's definitely the correct pick there. Um, he has been around a bit, definite, probably the worst part of this team, I would say. But there we go. And at left back, we have a definite pick. He will definitely be in the starting 11 for the first game against Colombia. Yuto Nagatomo plays for Galatasaray now. It says he plays for Inter here, but he's on loan at Galatasaray. And in fact, he's probably back at Inter now. But yes, he's very consistent. He's very attacking left back. He's right footed, but his left foot is very good too. As you can see, five star weak foot. Fever's not obviously a. Um, um, a uh, representation of real life, of course, uh, but uh, he he does have a very good weak foot in real life. Very well liked at Galatasaray. He might be moving to the Premier League. He's a solid left back. By solid, I don't mean solid. As, I mean he's five foot seven. That's the problem. Is that he can be a weakness? Is that he's not the strongest? He's he's not that good defensively, but he'll work for you, and uh, he's definitely a strong option at left back. And for the first centre back position, this could be debated. It could well be Makino who starts on whatever day it is against Colombia. But I've gone for Shoji just because he's a bit he's he's tall, he's fast. That's he may lack defensive experience, but he's fast and he's tall. That's why I would go for him alongside Yoshida. Yoshida's quite old, but have some have some new talent come into the squad. I believe that would be a good idea. Shoji is 25 at the time of this World Cup. But he is uh, definitely, he's, Shoji, if they did choose to play him, he would lack defensively. He might give away a penalty or something like that. But he's just fast enough and stronger than Makino, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but he's not as defensively talented. But I believe with Yoshida, that is the best option. The Japanese defence is seriously weak. Um, can't state this enough. It's probably going to be why they don't qualify out of the group. And, and a factor that I'll mention later. That's why they won't qualify out of the group is their two centre-backs. Yoshida has been injured for... He'll definitely start for one thing. and he But he has been injured for quite a bit of the season, to be honest. Um... And Southampton nearly got relegated and he didn't play that well. But he is a solid defender. Fan favourite at Southampton. He, he does a job for uh, you. And in the World Cup, I reckon he'll be a good enough defender for Japan. It's just his uh, other partner who may be the uh, issue in the team. And at right back, we have a very probably one of the best player who plays for one of the best teams. He may not be the best player in the squad, but he plays for one of the best teams in Europe. Um... Which is he plays for Marseille, who of course got to the who won the UEFA Cup, did they? 
I think they did. Did th Oh, I don't know. No, I'm... No, no, they lost it to Atletico. Sorry, but they got to the final, which is very good for them. <laughs> I was just like, what? No, they did lose the final, unfortunately. For them. To Atletico, and Sakai wasn't playing there because he got injured. But his position at right back is basically undisputed. He's very good. He's, a, again, a fan favourite at Marseille. Uh, he's a bit... He's a bit slow, is all I could say, and he's not that technically skilled. But he's, he'll, he'll definitely start a right back for one thing. However, he might be. He's he did pick up an injury towards the end of the season, so he might not start, or he might like actually get injured again and be out of the tournament. So that's something to watch for Sakai. Is that he could be um, uh, carrying an injury, which could be the only problem. Starting as the centre defensive midfield anchor I've gone with Hasebe and uh, of course 33 years old of 34 now actually but he's consistent he's had a great season with Eintracht Frank Frankfurt even at the age of 34 and I mean you, you've just got to pick him the captain reliable uh, he's done some great um, uh, both this year and last year he was in the Bundesliga's best goal line clearances which shows he works very hard again not that technically good and uh, of course not that tall either but uh, he does a job in centre defensive mid and he can move back to centre back if needed but I would play him as centre defensive mid because you just need that slot in the middle but you could play you could argue that Shibasaki could play in centre defensive mid and Hasbe could drop back but I would still play Hasbe in there he's just got a bit more strength about him and a bit more defensiveness that they like uh, Japan really need in that centre defensive midfield spot. Yeah, so wow, okay. <laughs> and then we go on to the forward line. We first up, I'm gonna speed up now because I want to get the game in. Uh, we have Inui. Very good player, very fast. He could well be a threat on cutting inside. And then we have the main two players. I think they're playing the other way uh, on there. Kagawa, he's not that good attacking, but he can pull stuff out of midair. Honda just controls the game. Honda there, he controls the game, of course I'm sure you know these two. Honda just controls the game in the Mexican League, that's what he's been doing. And I reckon he could do that against Colombian defence in the first game. Kagawa does a similar thing. And uh, yeah, but the, these two won't be playing. And that's because uh, Japan have left a lot of good players out the side. They do not have a proper striker. They only have like centre forwards like Okazaki and Asako. And uh, Kubo, they should have brought him for me. And uh, Nakajima scored 10 goals and had 12 assists. So basically, the point I'm trying to make is they've left a lot of good players out of the squad. As for who will start, I'm pretty sure Okazaki will start up front alongside um, Haraguchi on the right. But yeah, I better get into the game. I've been talking for too long. Let's see how these Jap the how this Japanese World Cup team will perform, even with possibly the two the two players who will not play in real life because they did not get selected. But yes. I'll show you how well the squad does and whether they did need the addition of a proper striker. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'll just go now. Okay, so here's the team and it's a Brazilian team, uh, sort of a league gun team actually. Sorry, I just got distracted there. Uh, league gun team, a very good team actually. Some team of the seasons in there, foot birthdays and all the others. And that's going to be a hard team to beat, I think, in Division 4. Good pass, come on. Inui, yes, there we go. Inui, he, he just brings so much pace to the Japanese team. He'll be crucial for scoring goals and cutting inside. Kobayashi, of course, with the assist there, but did you see that pass from Kagawa? That is what Kagawa can do in real life as well. He can just pick out the pass very easily to an attacking runner. And although Kobayashi won't be in the team, hopefully Okazaki can do stuff like that as well. I could well see Okazaki substituted in for, that Kobaya for Kobayashi in that situation. That could well be a goal that Japan score in the actual World Cup. Oh, and there we go. Free kick. It's unfortunate. And he does... <laughs> oh, no. That's just annoying. I didn't even know that was a celebration that you could do. I don't know if they've added that recently. But, yeah, that's unfortunate. Free kick, of course. Every team's vulnerable for free kicks. You've seen how many free kicks have been scored in this tournament already. It's a lot. And that's unfortunate to concede. Right, closing down. Oh, no. That's not good either. Okay, so again, Japan are very defensively weak. I've scored two goals in very quick succession. There, this could be a very high-scoring game. I need to sl stop it from stop it from getting out of hand. Just slow down the play a bit. And uh, as you see, um, 
Sakai is not the fastest right back and that could be an issue in the game. He could get beaten um, by uh, possibly Quadrado or something like that. Okay, Kobayashi. Oh, that's a goal. There we go. Equalised. That's, you see, I, I think Japan lack a striker who could just shoot on goal and because the other two strikers are just like backer, uh, Osako and Kagawa, not Osako, uh, not Kagawa, Okazaki, are more like supporting strikers and I don't think they're strikers who will just be, you need, really, you need strikers who just want to take a shot, like Kobayashi would have done if he'd been picked for the team. Let's go, yes, come on. Okay, so um, this is, again, this is a player who was not selected for the squad, Nakajima, who scored 10 goals and got 12 assists. Again, it's unlikely he would have scored a header in the World Cup, be it with his size, but he, Japan should have taken him because, like, he's, he's 10 goals and 12 assists, and as you see, he's scored, he actually scored in this game. So, really, I, like, I'm really strange about their decision. Right, okay, and that's the end of the match, and... As you see in that match, I scored two goals for players who didn't get picked for the in the World Cup squad. And for me, that just sums up the whole situation with Japan at the moment. Is the fact that okay, their defence is a problem, but the, like if you score enough goals, your defence doesn't matter too much. Other teams' defences, like Argentina and stuff like that, they're not great. I mean, Japan's defence is much worse than Argentina's, but still. But yeah, okay, if you have a bad defence, you can get away with it. But you need strikers to score and players who look like scoring. And for me, as you can see, oh, you're probably not, I'm probably not showing it, but Inui got the man of the match in this game. And honestly, uh, Inui is the only player, who, uh, him and Honda are the only players who I see scoring for Japan, to be honest. All the other players I don't, just don't think have the quality or talent to score in the World Cup. Um, Unless Kagawa has some sort of miracle, and uh, yeah, so I, I just you can't have just have two players who like non new and also neither of those players are strikers. Okazaki won't score, um, Osako won't score, and for me that's just why Japan will go out of the group stage. Is because like Inui might get a couple of goals and win a game if he's lucky, but like I d really don't see them being able to. <laughs> they should have. It's just because they've left so many of their good players out the squad. Nakajima scored 10 goals this season. Kobayashi scored 30 goals in the last J-League season. Okay, not this season, but in in um, when the J-League season go from January to January. In that season, he scored, I believe, 25 goals for his team. And Yu Yakubo, he scored 10 goals this season for Ghent. Like, if you compare that to Okazaki, I believe he hasn't scored in 2018. Osako scored 6 this season. That, that That's... Like and he played for a easily relegated club. I just don't understand why they didn't pick some players and picked others. And that's why I don't think they'll get through the group. Of course, it'll be a pleasant surprise if they do, but I really, really doubt it. To be honest, sorry, but I went that too, went too close to my mic. And yeah, so I'll see you next time. I have some good ideas for some new content. Of course, I'm nearly done with exams. So nearly done, so I'll be able to do a lot of new videos on the upcoming uh, days. Uh, some will be on the World Cup, some won't be, of course, the World Cup won't last forever. But yeah, I guess I'll see you next time, and uh, I want to keep the video short, so yeah, bye.